Welcome everyone to another service of the, at Pleasant Grove Church of God. Prophecy, my name is Pastor Juan B. Lopez Jr. Uh, here are the announcements. The Texas Call God Youth Summer Camp for this year, the, of the year 2020, has been canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. At this time, we are picking up offerings for Sunday school for the youth and to pay your tithes. All the information on how to send your offerings and tithes via mail or cash up are located under the title of this sermon message. Let us bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, we're asking, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you bless those that are giving offering right now, Father. Those that have a heart to give and are able to give, bless them. Multiply them financially. Bless them spiritually, Father. Those that have a heart to give but are not able to, Father, we're asking that you bless them as well, Father. Because it is from the heart, you, you're the one that searches the hearts uh, to want to give and to want to bless people, Father. And we're asking that you bless them as well, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we're asking that you touch this message, Father. That you take away that the words that come my mind, that come out of my mouth, Father, that be your words, Father. I'm asking for your word to touch my lips so that I can have a word for them, Lord Father, in Jesus' name, to bless them and to sanctify them with your word. Because your word is true, Father. We're asking that you anoint this message, Lord Father. Father, I pray that you anoint the, 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 this, uh, every word that come out my, comes out of my mouth, Father, because I, I pray, Lord Father, that it feeds the flock. I pray that it blesses them. I pray that it sanctifies them, O oh Lord. I pray that it edifies this church, Lord Father, and the community. Father, I pray that, that you cause hearts to repent, Father, with today's message, O oh Lord. I'm asking this, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name, Father, that you bless this message, that you use it in a powerful way, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Please open your Bibles to the book of Job, chapter 19. El libro de, de, de Job, capítulo 19. Let us focus today on verse 25, which reveals the next name or title of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it reads, For I know that my Redeemer lives. Let me repeat that again. For I know, for I know, for you know, that our Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. For we know that our Redeemer lives. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, lives inside of us. He rose from the dead. He is alive forevermore. He is sitting on the right hand of God. So therefore, our Redeemer lives. And we know this by faith. We know this because we keep this truth in our hearts. We know this because the living Christ lives and dwells inside of us. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. A redeemer is someone, brothers and sisters, who buys back something that was once, that was once theirs. A redeemer is someone who comes to save, who rescues, or delivers someone out of trouble by paying a great price for their freedom. Jesus Christ is considered our living Redeemer because He came to save and to deliver us out of sin by paying a great price for it. He died on the cross. He paid a price with His blood. He paid a price with His suffering for every single lash, every single scar. He did that for us. He paid a very steep price for it. He paid, his, he paid a price with his life. He gave his life for us. The price that Jesus Christ paid for was for our deliverance from sin was his life. He died upon the cross for our sins so that may, he may redeem us, so he may deliver us, 
so he may save us from our sins, for our sins leads us to hell and separates us from God. But thanks be to God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for what Jesus did for us. Thanks be to God that Jesus Christ is our living Redeemer who saves, who delivers us, and redeems us from going to hell. I thank God for that, brothers and sisters, that have a place once I leave this earth, I will be with Christ. If you're a believer and you're a follower of Christ, you have a place where you will go once you leave this earth. You will be with God forever. We will not end up in hell. That is God's promise to the believer. For the scripture says in Mark chapter 10 verse 45, Marcos 10, 45, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 verse 24 Romanos 3, 23 y versículo 24 dice, For all have sinned and fall short and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus the Lord. You see, redemption is not in anyone else but Christ. Redemption is not in me. You're not redeemed because of me or through me. We're not redeemed because of some priest or pastor. We are redeemed. We receive redemption. It's in Christ. It says being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus the Lord. It is not in any other religion. It is only in Christ. Because He says, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the, the life. No one cometh to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Amen? So the redemption is in Christ. Redención es en Cristo. No hay ninguna otra persona o no en religión. En nada, solamente en Cristo hay redención. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, Galatas 3, 13, dice, it says, Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. You see, Christ took the punishment for our sins on that tree. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. The wages of sin is what? Death. And the wages we would have had to pay is punishment in the lake of fire. But Christ took that punishment for us. And Christ was made a curse for us. In other words, he took the punishment for our sins. He took the ultimate act sacrifice for us. Because it says, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on that tree. In other words, our sins were punished on that cross. And Christ took the punishment for us so that we won't pay the wages of sin, which is death. Christ paid those wages of sin, which is death. He died the physical death. But thank be to God, hallelujah, God raised him from the dead. And he is alive forevermore. And he is alive in our hearts. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. Colossenses capítulo 1 verse 14 dice, And whom we have received through his blood, even forgiveness of sins. We also are redeemed. We are washed. We are justified. Hallelujah. Through the blood, the precious blood, hallelujah, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nuestra redención viene por medio de la sangre de Jesucristo. Por el perdón de nuestros pecados. 
for the forgiveness of sins. We are forgiven of our sins because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding that blood. For the forgiveness of sins. For redeeming us through your blood. Gracias, Señor, por tu preciosa sangre. Porque por medio de tu sangre, Señor, mis pecados fueron perdonados. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. First Peter, primer Pedro, chapter 1, capítulo 1, versículo 8 a 19, verse 18 through 19 says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You see, Jesus Christ was the perfect lamb of God. He was sinless. There was no sin found in him. There was no corruption found in him. He was a sinless, perfect lamb of God. Hallelujah. He was the perfect person, the perfect God, the perfect sacrifice. To die on the cross for our sins. But the precious blood of Christ as a lamb of without blemish and without spot. I am thankful, Lord. I am thankful for the precious blood of God. I am so thankful for the precious blood of Jesus. It was shed for you and me. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Gracias, Señor, por tu sangre preciosa. Gracias, Señor, por tu sangre. Gracias, Señor, por tu sangre. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood. Because if it wasn't for you, Lord, I wouldn't have an option or a way for forgiveness of my sins. I would have still been living my own man. I would have still been living my own ways. I would have been living in sin. But thanks be to God, your precious blood forgave me of my sins. Cleansed me as white as snow. Thank you, God. Gracias, Señor, por tu sangre. Por medio de tu sangre mis pecados fueron, fueron perdonados. Gracias, Señor. Tu preciosa sangre fue mi redención. Tu, pro, tu preciosa sangre me lavó blanco como nieve. Gracias, Señor, por todo lo que has hecho por mí y por toda tu gente. Oh, Señor, como nos has amado. Oh, well, Lord Jesus, you loved us so much. And you bled. That you died on the cross. And you were raised from the dead. Hallelujah. We have victory in Christ. You were the precious blood. You were the lamb without blemish and without spot. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We can find redemption in Jesus Christ because he is our living redeemer. Praise the Lord. Not only can Jesus Christ redeem us from our sins, but he can deliver us and keep you and me from losing our mind when you are going through something very tough times, much like what we're going through right now. There's a lot of people, unbelievers, that are losing their minds, struck with fear because of the coronavirus, over something that's invisible that they cannot see. They're not able to see this invisible enemy. Praise God. They're struck with fear because they don't have the peace of God with them. I pray for them, for God to give them peace. I pray for them, for God to save their souls. And only God can help us through these tough times. Only through Christ can we have peace with God. 
He is the only one that can deliver us and keep us from losing our minds through this coronavirus, through your difficult time of losing your job because of it. You know, things are going to be okay. This will pass. Have peace with God. Do not fear. Cast all your anxieties to Christ, for he cares for you. This was the case with Job in, in, in chapter 19, verse 25. This is the case of Job de Job in chapter 19, verse 25. In the book of Job, we learn that Job was a righteous and, and a blessed man who was rich in money, rich in possession, and cattle. He was a man who was blessed to have a beautiful family and a beautiful wife. Not only was Job a blessed and righteous man, but he was also a praying man, which is what all of us are to be. We are to be praying people. The people of God must be a praying people. The house of God should be a house of prayer. In these times more than ever, we should be praying for our nation. In these times, we should be praying for our families. We should be praying for our jobs. We should be praying for our president of the United States. We should pray for everyone in government that they make the right decisions. We should pray for our, our country. We should pray for those that are affected with the coronavirus. For God to touch them and heal them. For God to touch the hands and, and the minds of those doctors to come up with something or a cure. For God to continue and be in control of this situation. Remember, God is in control. Praise God. Job. Not only was Job blessed and a righteous man, but he was also a praying man who prayed not only for himself to be blessed, but prayed for his family and others to be blessed. But one day, Satan wanted to prove to God that if he destroyed everything that Job held dear to his heart, then Job would turn his back on God. So God permitted Satan to stricken Job with adversity as long as he did not touch his soul. And so one day, in less than 24 hours, Job lost everything he had. He lost all of his money. He lost all his possessions. He lost all his cattle. He lost all his children by death because of an expected storm that had come upon them. Much like an expected storm that has come upon our country and upon the world. Many people have died from the virus. Very sad. We're going through some tough times, like Job did, similar to Job, but in a different situation. He lost all his possessions. Then later on, Job's health and his physical condition began to deteriorate to the point that he no longer looked attractive to his wife anymore. Job's wife could not stand to see Job suffer so much that she told Job that he told him to curse God and die. And because Job's wife couldn't take it anymore, she left him all by himself. And to make matters worse, Job had some friends who were accusing him for some sin that he, had, that he may have committed because they claimed that if you suffer in this life, it is because you had done something wrong. But we know for a fact that that's not always the case. Good people also suffer. But don't you know that you don't have to be doing anything wrong in this life to suffer? You see, because we have sin in this world. And I've been saying this to other people while we have so many dark situations here in this earth. Because we have sin in this world, because we have some sinful people in the world, and because there is a devil, that is enough to let you know that we will suffer, and you don't have to be a bad person to suffer in this life. 
We have a Satan that is running around seeking to steal, kill, and destroy. Seeking to whom he may devour. There are people who don't even smoke, and but yet still have get cancer. There are people who don't even drink alcohol, but yet they still suffer from liver or kidney failure. There are some people who don't even chase women or men, but yet somehow they be, become stricken with eggs. There are some people who have been working hard for 20 to 30 years on one job, but yet they get laid off and lose everything they had worked hard for. There are some people who have been married for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, but yet one day their spouse decides they don't even want to be married to them anymore. There are some people who have raised their children in church, provided their children with the best of everything, provided their children with a decent home, with a godly home, sent their children to the best schools, sent their children to the best colleges, but yet their children end up in prison, addicted to drugs, or dead. Yes, you don't have to be a bad person to suffer, brothers and sisters. Good people also suffer too. Jesus Christ says in John 16, 33 and Juan 16, 33, that in the world ye shall have tribulation. Listen very closely to what he says. In this world you shall have tribulation. You will have problems. Things will come. Storms will come. Tornadoes in life will come. Tragedies will occur. Bad situations will happen. But look what Jesus says. Look closely and listen closely what the very word of God says. It says, but be of good cheer. What? Be of good cheer? How can I be of good cheer when everything's, when all chaos is falling apart? When everything around me is crumbling? How can I be of good cheer? How can I be of good cheer, God? Why? He gives us an answer. He says, because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. That's why I can be of good cheer. That's why you, my brothers and sisters, can be of good cheer. That's why you can have the peace of Christ. That's why you can have joy. Because God, hallelujah, has defeated the enemy. Because Christ, my Lord, has overcome the world. Because Christ, my Lord, has, come, has overcome storms. Because Christ, my Lord, has overcome adversity. Hallelujah. Because Christ, my Lord, has gone through, has overcome bullying. He has overcome getting beat up. He has overcome being mocked. He, was, he overcame being humiliated. He overcame death. Hallelujah. He overcame death. And he overcame the grave. Oh, hallelujah. And he gave us victory. Hallelujah. In Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I praise him in this storm. I praise him in this time. I glorify you, Christ. Thank you for the victory that I have in you. Thank you, God. He said, be of good cheer. That's why I'm always calm. My children often ask, the children, my, children, my son is one of those that are a little bit uh, panicky. He, he, a little fear gets into him sometimes. But I always tell my son that I'm at peace with God. All the stuff that's going on does not faze me. Why? Because I have peace in my heart. I have joy in my heart. This coronavirus, panic doesn't come to me. Fear does not come to me. But the Spirit of God rules in my heart. And the peace of God fills me. And the joy that, that is in the Lord, my joy that is in the Lord, fills me. That's the way you should be, brothers, my brothers and sisters. Don't let fear rule you. Let God and the Holy Spirit of Christ rule you. Let His peace rule over your heart. Let His joy and the Father rule in your heart. Don't let the, if when chaos happens around you, don't let even let it phase you. That's what Christ, that's what the scripture says. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am with you. Be still and know that I am in your, 
in your that my presence is there. Be still and know that when two or three are gathered together in my name, I there I am in the midst of them. You see, Christ is with you right now. You're not alone. Hallelujah. Job was all alone. All the people that all the people that he loved died. His wife left him. He he lost everything. He was sick from the skin. He had he had a skin condition that, that was painful and unbearable. But yet he was not alone because God was with him. And Christ is with you right now through this coronavirus. And Christ is with you right now even though you lost your job. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ is with you right now in the midst of this storm, in the midst of your tragedy, in the midst of your loneliness. You're not alone because Christ is with you. So be of good cheer. Because Christ, who lives inside of you, overcame the world. Yes, brothers and sisters, in this world, you will experience some problems. You will experience some troubles. You will experience setbacks. You will experience pain. You will experience heartaches, grief. You will experience sorrow and disappointments. And on and on and on. But to overcome the problems, the troubles and setbacks and pain and heartaches and sorrows and disappointments that may come your way, you've got to be like Job. You've got to be like Job. You've got to know that no matter what trouble may come your way, just know that your Redeemer lives. That in itself should give us peace. Because I know that Christ lives inside of me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I serve a living Christ. Because Christ lives inside of me, I have joy. Because Christ lives inside of me, I have peace. Hallelujah. Because Christ lives inside of me, I know, that it, I know nothing around me will shake me. Hallelujah. I am not shaken by this coronavirus. I am not shaken by the turmoil or chaos around me. Because I know my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My Redeemer lives inside of me, and He is with me, and He walks with me. Hallelujah. He is with us. There is a song that says, Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fears are gone. Because I know. Praise the Lord. I am so glad that Christ is in control over things. I'm glad that 
over our situation. That means we have already victory over our, our storms. We have victory over whatever situation you're going through right now. Because we know Christ lives and he is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. Praise the Lord. Trouble don't last forever. Because Christ is forever. And if your Redeemer lives, that means he's still on the throne. And if he is still on the throne, that means he's still working miracles. If you don't believe that Christ is working miracles, he is. He's working miracles every day. Praise the Lord. And if he's still working miracles, that means he can work a miracle in your life. And the Redeemer can, that can work a miracle in your life is Jesus Christ the Lord, our living Redeemer. The reason why I know the Lord can work a miracle in your life, because when Job went through his season of trials and tribulations, at the end, he was blessed. You see, Christ, like I said before, will have the last word. You see, Job, in the end, Job knew that, that, that there was going to be victory in the end. That's why he stayed faithful to God, even though he, even though he went through these trials, even though he went through these friends that were accusing him of sitting, of possibly sitting something, of, of possibly suffering everything. He was suffering because possibly he maybe committed a sin. That's why he was suffering. That's what they were saying. But Christ, uh, God already gave him victory in the end. He was blessed in the end. You see, that's, the, that's why I have peace in my life. That's why I have joy. Because I know in the end of all of this, there will be victory. I know in the end of all of this, there will be blessing. I know in the end of this, there will be forever. There will be eternal life. In the end, I will be fully redeemed. He was blessed with seven times more riches, Job was, that he had before. Job was blessed with a new wife and family. He was blessed with more cattle and possession than he had before. You see, if you stay faithful to God, and you hang on to Him, and you continue to praise Him, and you continue to have that joy, and you continue to have that peace in your heart, and continue living for Him, He will bless you tenfold in the end. You will see a light in the end of the tunnel. You see, God keeps his promises. God does bless his people. But first we must go through trials. But first we must go through tribulation. Sometimes we may have to go through tragedies. For God to bring us to the end of blessing. Sometimes he has to break us into a thousand pieces. To put us back together to be who God called us to be. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes he has to break us to heal us. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our healer. Job was blessed with more cattle possession than he had before. And if God is able to do that for Job, my brothers and sisters, he is able to do that for you because Jesus Christ is our living redeemer. Jesus is our living redeemer that heals you when you are sick. Jesus is our living redeemer that can pick you up when you are down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is our living redeemer that can strengthen you when you are weak. Jesus is our living redeemer who can provide all your needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Jesus is our living redeemer and he provides for our needs. Jesus is our living redeemer who can shelter us in this time of storm. You see, we serve a living Christ that is always with us, brothers and sisters. That in itself should give us peace and joy in our hearts. No matter the chaos around us, no matter what may, is happening right now in your life, no matter if you're stuck in the pit, Christ will lift you up. When you are down, He will pick you up. When you are weak, He will strengthen you. God, you should not worry uh, if, if you're going to be able to feed your family. You should not worry because God will provide a way. Jesus Christ, we serve a way maker. 
He is the way, the truth, and the life. You see, that in that scripture, it's not also in the way of salvation, but he also is the way through everything. He always is the way maker. He is the way to, to feed your family. He is the way to feed your soul. He is the way to salvation. And that is the truth. He is the way to provide for your family. Jesus is our living redeemer who can shelter us in time of storm. Jesus is our living redeemer who delivers us when we are in trouble. Even when you're the one that gets yourself in trouble, Christ's grace will deliver you from that. He delivers us when we are in trouble, even when the trouble is caused by us. Jesus is our living Redeemer who delivers us when we are in trouble. Jesus is our living Redeemer who can deliver you out of drug addiction and alcohol addiction. Amen? Jesus Christ can do that. We serve a living Redeemer. We serve a living God. We serve a living Christ. Jesus is our living Redeemer who can deliver you out of an abusive relationship. Jesus is our living Redeemer who can deliver you out of an abusive relationship, an abusive spouse. Jesus is our living Redeemer who can deliver you out of darkness into His marvelous light. You know, we live in a dark, dark world, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Many people are lost. The unbelieving is, is, is uh, running around like with their heads cut off, like a chicken with their heads cut off. They're in fear. They're in panic. And they don't know where to get peace. They don't know where to get joy. They're running around everywhere. Trying to pile up for food. They don't have the peace that we have in Christ. And brothers and sisters, it is our job to express and to be a testimony of Christ. For what God has done for us to those people who are living in fear. We are the ones that we can lead them to the lead them to Christ who will take them out of their darkness, that will take them out of, out of their fear, who will take them out of their panic into this marvelous light. We, through the testimony of, of the gospel of Christ, what God has done for us, can lead others who are in fear into the one who gives them a sound mind. For God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind. And Christ is the one that's able to do that for those that are in fear and those that are in panic. Jesus Christ is our living redeemer because he once was dead, but now he is alive forevermore. And he is able to save and he is able to deliver and he is able to redeem you. He's able to redeem you, brothers and sisters. He's able to redeem you, those who are lost, those who don't, who are alone, who are running in fear, who are living in, in panic. Those of you who are thinking about committing suicide. Those of you that are about to give up. Those of you who, who is about to take that drug. Those of you who are about to inject that heroin. Those of you who are about to end their marriage. Those of you who are about to give up on that child. Jesus Christ can redeem you and your family. Jesus Christ can redeem all of that. He can take you out of your dark place and into his marvelous light. That is God's promise. And all you need to do my brothers and sisters, all you need to do, those that don't know Christ, is to trust in Him and let Him do the rest because Jesus Christ is our living Redeemer. Only through Christ, only through surrendering it all to God, Only surrendering your life to Christ. Only repenting of your sins. Seeking God's forgiveness. And, getting, and surrendering your life. And surrendering all, everything that you're going through to Christ. Will you be redeemed.
So I invite you, those that are listening there, watching right now on Facebook Live, those that are going, those that are about to commit suicide right now, those that are, that are about to give up on their marriage, those that are about to give up on that child that's rebellious, those that are about to give up on their jobs, those that are about to give up on church, those who, who are hurt by, 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 who have been hurt by someone, those who are living a better life, those that, 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 that are stuck in that pit, those that, that are hurting right now for whatever reason, if you're hurt, if you feel all alone, I invite you, whether you're a believer or non-believer, to bow your heads, to bend your knees, to surrender all your situations, to cast all your cares upon Christ. Surrender all of your guilt to Him. Bend your knees. Come before the presence of the Lord. Come to the altar of prayer. Before the presence of God. Who will forgive you. Who is willing and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that God raised Him from the dead. Believe it in your hearts. Be sincere. My brothers and sisters, be sincere. Those that are struggling. That God raised him from the dead. It is faithful and trust and just to forgive you of your sins. To redeem you. To cleanse you from all unrighteousness. To save you. He is just and faithful to restore those relationships. He is faithful to resurrect you from the old man into a new creation in Christ. He is just to give you eternal life. He will redeem you. He will redeem your family. He will restore those relationships. He will restore your situation. Hallelujah. There is victory in the end, brothers and sisters. There is victory in the end. There is blessing in the end. Hallelujah. <clears throat> that is God's promise. That's not my promise. Yes, it's tough, my brothers and sisters, going through this. But be of good cheer, for God has overcome the world. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's tough. Yes, you are hurt. Yes, your, your heart is broken into a thousand pieces. Yes, I may not understand what you're going through. But pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. But God does. Jesus understands. Christ understands. The world may not understand. I certainly don't understand what you're going through. But God does. He's right there beside you waiting for you to turn to Him. He's waiting for you to go to Him. He's waiting for you to go to Him. He's calling upon you to cast all your cares upon Christ. Oh, Father, help us, oh Lord. We ask for you, Lord, that you touch lives today. Father, we're asking that you bless those that are hurting, Father. God, we're asking this morning, Lord, that you heal those with hearts that are broken into a thousand pieces. We're asking you to pick up all those pieces, Lord, and put them together with your love and your grace and your care, Lord. Father, I pray that you reach out to those, that you reach your hand down to those that, that got themselves in trouble, Lord. Those that got themselves in that pit, in that dark place. Father, I'm asking, Lord Jesus, that you reach out. Hallelujah. Those that are crying out for you for help right now. Kind of like Peter did. When he's not with, with Father, I pray for those that have that, that have lost their sight on you, that turn around and, and lost their, their eyes fixed on you, Father, like Peter did. Father, I remember when Peter had his eyes fixed on, on Christ as he was walking on the water. Father, all of us have gone through that. We have for, for a long time, we have 
kept our eyes fixed on Christ while all of a sudden uh, a chaos had occurred and we and we allowed fear to set in like it did with Peter. And we, and we took our eyes off Christ and we started drowning in our fear. Father, I pray for those who are drowning in their fear. Lord Jesus, I pray like just like you reached out in your hand when Peter said, save me, Lord. Save me. Take me out of this. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Help me. I'm drowning in my fears. Lord, save me. I'm drowning from panic. Save me, Lord. Father, we're asking that the Lord Jesus, Jesus, we're asking that you reach down as you did Peter and pull us out and pick us up and lift us up out of our darkness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And lift us up out of the drowning waters of fear. Hallelujah. Pick us up out of the pit that we put ourselves in. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift us up out of our darkness and put us into your loving arms. But take us out of our darkness into your marvelous light. Save us, Lord. Lots of people are drowning in fear. They need healing. They need your touch. Their families are being destroyed. They need healing. I pray for restoration, Lord. I pray for people to be killed by the coronavirus. I plead the blood of Jesus upon our families, upon our nation. There's people that are, have broken marriages. Te touch them, oh Lord. Heal them, Lord. Touch them, oh Lord. Heal them, oh Lord. I pray for them, Lord. Bless them, touch them, oh Lord. In Jesus' name. I'm just a woman. Thank you, Lord. Help. Amen. And amen. Let us give praises to God this morning. Thank you, Lord, for everything, oh Lord. We praise you, Lord, for your touch, Father. We're praising for everything you've done for us, Lord Father. We bless your holy name, Father. We're asking, Lord, and we bless your holy name. And we lift your name on high. We give you praises and we thank you, Lord. And we're asking, Lord, that you touch us, oh Lord. And we praise you because you're in control of this, of, of this whole situation, Father. And we give you praises, Lord. And we say, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost. You're now dismissed. God bless you. And God be with you, brothers and sisters. And we will see you next Sunday on Facebook Live.